So welcome everybody to Live with Prima. My name is Limor Weber and tonight we're going to, or today, I'm used to teaching at night. Today we're going to create some uh, cute little, what are we making? We're making some cards, mixed media cards. <laughs> I actually knew what we were making. I'm just a little tired this morning. So we're going to make some mixed media cards and um, they're super cute. I'll show them to you in just a moment. Um, but there's a couple announcements that I just wanted to make. And um, we have lots of people coming on. Yeah, so hang tight if you're having any issues. Um, the announcements are set, uh, such. Um, next show is Steph Miller. And you guys know how cute and adorable and amazing that girl is. So Thursday, April 24th, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, um, which is 9.30 Eastern Tan Standard Time. She's creating, of course, um, a mini album because that's her specialty. She's pretty amazing at it. And she's going to be using the Seashore album, uh, Seashore collection. So it's a brand new collection. Beautiful. Uh, let me see. Registration for Art Venture California is now open. Um, the event is not until January uh, 2015, but you guys know that it fills up pretty quick. So uh, I believe it's January 6th to the 7th. So right before CHA, um, and if you have any questions and for registration, uh, contact Denny at primamarketinginc.com, and Sharon can put his email address for us um, in the chat. And then, um, th so exciting because National Scrapbook Day, you guys have to, you guys have to totally come. Okay, so we're gonna have uh, May third, um, May third blog hop and live with Prima shows giveaways all day. And so we're going to have six classes on live with Prima and we're starting at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So all day join us for free classes using the latest and greatest. So it, you guys will just be overloaded with Prima all day on May 3rd. How cool is that? Um, so we're all pretty excited about that. So be sure to tune in for that. So that's it for my announcements, and I may do them again at the end of the show. All right. Um, let me see. Any questions so far? <clears throat> Excuse me. My voice is... I think I I've been talking too much. <laughs> I think Al Alberto is from... Uh, the question on the chat is, who's Alberto? I think he's um, an educator from Spain, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Anyhow, um, here's I'm gonna go ahead and switch the camera. Here we go. Look at I even have a box that's live with Prima. Because otherwise I will not be organized. And um, here's what we're making, and we're gonna make a third one as a surprise as well. So we're gonna make these super awesome um, mixed media cards. And I don't know. So one of the things that I get requests for all the time, and you guys can tell me, is sometimes you want to give out cards to your friends that are not so crazy um, embellished because the non-crafters um, that receive a card from you wouldn't necessarily appreciate all the amazingness, you know, Prima resins and stuff that you want to hoard to yourself. So um, I was asked to please create some cards that are more uh, mixed media without so many embellishments, but still using Prima. So this was kind of my um, idea behind these cards. So I'm hoping that that's what you like. Um, but what I'm most excited about today is I have them in this beautiful little pot. Can you guys see what this is? Oh yes, it's the brand new uh, Prima. Um, they're called Resist Chalk Edgers. So they're they're essentially they're permanent inks. Okay, so you guys are used to watching me create with these guys right here, and these are the non-permanent. So these are um, these will uh, reactivate with water, whereas these, once they're dry, they are permanent, which is pretty uh, awesome. Um, and I'm going to show you really quick how they come. And here's the pack, and we have metallic ones too, by the way. Here's what they how they come which is pretty cool. So you don't have to, so you can, um, you know, in one pack, you can get um, a pretty nice array of colors to create, you know, a full project. So they're pretty, uh, pretty cool and very inexpensive. So um, 
but I'm going to be using several packages tonight. I'm actually using a whole bunch of them um, on here. So, um, and I did, I did, uh, for those of you that were asking, I did bring them into to the shop. I, a notions order literally just arrived, um, the other day. So, so yes, they will be, um, going on at the end of the, at the end of the, uh, class. All right. So, um, let's get started. I'm going to start by showing you, I don't know if you guys know, but Prima has textured paper pads. Did you guys know that? Oh, the light is shining right on it. Hang on, let me move this a little bit. We're getting a weird lighting. There we go. Is that a bit better? I think so. So um, this is the um, basic uh, textured paper pad. So it's pretty cool. The I, I don't know if you can actually see by this, but the paper is a bit textured, um, which is really, really pretty. And so there's this kind. And actually, if I'm not mistaken, yes, there's this guy too. So really fun. I actually love these um, texture paper pads, and I love the cardstock in it. So that's what we're going to use today. And the number for this one is 845780. I'm just going to move these off to the side for a moment. And we're going to use <clears throat> these are these pads are awesome as well. They're the script pad and the ledger pads. So this one is, I mean, look how gorgeous the paper is. I got to show you really quick. Like they're just, they're stunning, right? Stunning, stunning pages and very neutral, right? So great for backgrounds. Um, and this one in particular is 84417. And then the ledger one is 84424. Okay. 844424, sorry. Too many fours in there. So let's go ahead and get started. So for the first card, um, I'm going to need one of the ledger. I believe that's what I used. I don't even remember what I used. If it was ledger or if it was, I think it was, I don't know. Let's try this one. We don't have to make it perfectly the same, do we? I don't think so. This one looks good to me. The script pad. All right. So this is going to be our background. So let's open that up. Take our... And you can make really this card any size you want. Um, the size that I made this one, I'll just measure it because you guys know you guys know enough of my classes. I don't measure anything, but um, this is four and it's about four and a half by four and a half by almost I don't know six and a quarter, I guess. So we'll do four and a half. Uh, Let's do, is that, let's do four and a quarter, so we'll do eight and a half, so we can fold it in half. <laughs> you don't measure either, right, so that we could, so that when we fold it, it's kind of like this, right, it's four and a quarter, and then we're going to cut it this way at, what did I say, how long was this thing, about that long? That's how long we'll cut it. See, that's how I measure. That's how good I am at measuring. I'm actually pretty good at math. I just, I don't know. There's something about creating um, cards that always drives me crazy about measuring and being perfect. It's my the mixed media in me. All right, so here's our little um, start of the card. Okay, and I, by the way, I always love to have the white inside because then I can write. I find sometimes when there's um, a pattern inside, I find it really hard to write the cards. So let's use that, and then all we're going to need is a small piece of white cardstock. And do I have any? Oh, see, you know what? I always keep white cardstock already um, cut up in my stash. So this one's already cut up, so let's use that guy. And what we want to do is we want to leave, if you can see, we want to leave a little bit of a border, like quite a bit, actually. So I'm actually going to go ahead and kind of measure, and here's how I measure. I take my fingernail, and I just kind of make a little indent of where I want it to be cut and that's how I cut. We're going to call this the mixed media cuts, <laughs> mixed media measurements. <laughs> All right. And I'm not going to go ahead and put it right um, onto the card right now. What I'm going to do is first we're going to create on it and then at the end I'll go ahead and paste it on. So let's go ahead and start with this one. And um, I used several different things for this guy. I used a lot of stencils. So let's put out some of the colors that I used. Um, I used Lime Pie, which is super awesome color. 
and a little bit of one of my favorites actually is the vintage pink it's actually really bright uh, pink a little bit of the olive vine just a little bit a little bit of the cult foot pe uh, petals of course uh, teal damask and what else did I use I think I used some from here as well um, let's just grab a whole bunch anyway because it's just too much fun you know what I mean there's just, just so many so many we could use let's use all of those oh actually I use this guy all right I think that's good I think we have a nice little array of colors very nice and beautiful so now what I want to go ahead and do is let's start creating our background and to start our background I took this guy right here which is one of my favorites and I'm sorry it, it's like out of stock right now everywhere and I apologize but we're gonna take this guy right here which is the orbs stencil it's nine six zero four four five it's a very very well used stencil in my household as you can see and that's okay right and um, oh actually you know what yes sorry I was gonna say something else but uh, I'm not um, I'm gonna start by um, using I'm gonna use the edge right here and I'm going to apply it just like so and I'm gonna take my teal damask okay, and I'm just going to apply it just like so and when I do this what I want to do is I want to make some areas a little bit um, more um, a little bit darker than others so I'm gonna press really hard on some of them and on some of them I'm just gonna let them be a little bit more subdued okay so kind of that shading um, effect as you if you will so some a little bit darker than others and when you lift you'll kind of see that color variance do you see what I mean okay so we'll do that a little bit right there and maybe we'll do just a little bit more right here on the bottom no mixed media card ever turns out exactly the same, right, as you all know. So just like that. And then what I want to do also is I want to do some of these big circles. So I'm actually going to go ahead and apply this circle right here. And I want to make it really nice and dark. So this is using the chalk edgers just as is, right? And you'll see, like you can see how vibrant the colors are, right? And how easy they are to use with the look at that that is so bright and then we're going to use a little bit of a smaller circle up at the top so i'm thinking maybe like right there okay we want to make it dark just like that fabulous okay so that's the first step and what I don't have to worry about is um, doing anything to it. I uh, usually I would let it dry. It's still a little bit wet, but if you um, if you are going to add water to it, you can simply just go and heat set it with your heat gun, right? Now I don't really need to do that because I'm not adding water right now, so um, I don't need to worry too too much. The next thing that I'm going to grab is. One of my favorites, my, one of my new favorites, as you can tell, it's also very well used. You can't even tell what it says. Let's see if I put it down, could you tell? It's all those lovely words. It's 572242 is the number of the stencil. It's really, really fun, but I love to use it a little bit more um, in the abs abstract, if you, will, if you will. I love like this these parts. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, and I'm gonna take, um, this one is cult foot petals and blossom bud okay and so I'm just gonna give it a little bit and I'm gonna apply it just like I did the last one right just a little bit like this and a little bit on the top right there don't go too crazy on it just a little bit to give us something something right it's like it's like you have splatter marks right and then we're going to go a little bit up here. So much fun. Right? Love that color. So bright. 
And then we do need a little bit more yellow, so we're going to go ahead and apply that yellow maybe up here a bit. You want to balance your pages out. If you have something on the bottom, you certainly want to have something on the top so that your eye doesn't just go to one place. And then we're going to apply a little bit of yellow right here, but how we're going to add it is we're going to add a little bit of the leaves and make it slightly more abstract as well. So a little bit of the leaves, and what I like to do is sometimes I like to combine the colors. So I'm going to actually go ahead and grab a little bit of the lime pie and go right over the top. And I don't have to worry about contaminating it. I, could, I can always go um, on my page later and just take that off, which is really, really great. Okay, so that creates that gorgeous color on there. And we're going to do a little bit more down here. Okay, so we're going to go in with our lime pie first maybe. And then do a little bit of the yellow. Love that. Beautiful, beautiful shade. And I know the camera doesn't pick it up perfectly, but pretty cool. Right? So that's our background, as you can see, right, so far. And then what we want to do next is um, do a little bit of my favorite splattering technique. So I'm going to go ahead, which I think I left over here. Don't know why I put it away. Here it is. This is, um, I like to use a little bit of that uh, fluid acrylic ink. Love using it. And I'm going to create a little bit of splatter marks on it, but not very much, just a little bit. Okay. And I like to take a fan brush. And usually I have like a little plate or something like that, which I can grab. And so I have these guys right here, and I'm just going to apply a little bit of the ink right there. Don't need too much, and this is just Liquitex Extra Fluid Acrylic Ink, all right? And I'm just going to apply a little bit of it, and sometimes if it's not watery enough, I like to add just a little bit of water, just like that. I make a mess all the time. That's how I create. It's the best thing. And cover your area when you do this, otherwise you're going to get paint absolutely everywhere. So hang on, I'm just covering my area. And then with my fan brush, I'm going to give it some beautiful splatter marks, just like that. Very subtle, but very pretty. Right? Just like so. And then we're going to go ahead and give this a quick heat set. Any questions so far? Just like that. I'm going to move this off to the side or we're all going to get black and messy. Actually, I just will because you're not here. All right. So this is what it looks like so far. Really simple. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to start a little bit more of our shading. And how we do that is we're going to take one of my favorite stamps. This is, uh, this cling stamp is 570491. Okay. And I love, love, love these guys. And we're going to take this one and we're going to take this one. Okay. And I love these because this is not just one stamp, but it's three stamps in one. Isn't that cool? So we are going to use, I love to use my Stamper's Big Brush Pen because this is India ink, so it's really dark ink. Um, and I love that. You can certainly use um, your chalk edgers as well. However, I don't have black on here. I don't know why, and so I can't use mine. <laughs> Otherwise, that's what I would use. And we're going to actually go ahead, and I don't like to use stamping blocks. We're just going to go ahead and stamp that right on top. Okay, you guys know. Just like that. Isn't that fun? And then we're going to do the same thing with this one. Just 
just like that. Beautiful. And if it's stamped a little bit off, that's even better. I kind of like that. All right. So that's, that's number one. And then we still want to shade some of these guys as well. So what I like to do is I like to take um, either a charcoal pencil, either, you know, Stabilo pen or just charcoal. Any charcoal pencil will work. Uh, let me think here. Do we have or watercolor pencil? Like this watercolor pencil would work actually. So let's try that out. So all you need to do is you just want to shade it a little bit. So you're going to go ahead and just go around. Let me put the camera down just a bit. And you're just going to outline the circle a bit. Excuse my nails. I'm going to get them done um, after the show. <laughs> And just like that and this is like I said this is a watercolor pencil so and it's uh, black so it, it'll uh, it'll run in a moment as soon as I apply a little bit of water so I'm just outlining some of the circles a bit and I'm being uh, I'm not being very careful I want them to be kind of rough and fun okay so just like that and then I'm gonna take a thin brush and apply a little bit of water have a little bit of a dish of water right beside me and I'm going to pull that color a bit and create that really fun shading. Can you see that? Sorry, the camera. There we go. Okay, So just like that, just pull the color a bit. And what I love is that the teal isn't running, right? Because the ink is permanent, but the watercolor is, which is awesome. I absolutely have fallen in love with these new inks. They rock, rock, rock. Okay, just a little bit more. And we're almost done. Just like that, right? So that now there's a really nice shading of the circles. So really easy steps. Next, what we're going to do is put the stamps aside so that we don't lose them. How many of you lose your stamps? You create and then you put them everywhere and then they're not with its partner and then you're like where's my stamp I can't find it anyway I do that all the time all the time so that's that now we're going to take another background stamp <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> a little bit of an oldie but goodie this one is from the Rondell collection do you guys remember the Rondell collection 559359 is the stamp and I love using all of these. This is a very well used stamp set as well. And I love using this guy right here. And what we're going to do is we want to actually apply some ink right there. But here's what we're going to do. I don't want it to like prominent. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stamp off on my page first so that it's dark here and it's light right here, okay? So that you kind of have that light background, that's what I want. So you're gonna do that again on the corners up here. Oops, and then we're gonna stamp off so that it's not so dark, and then apply in the corner, right? Just like that. There we go. I do want just a little bit right there, a little bit more, so I'm just going to do that. Oh, there we go. I love that. Beautiful, beautiful. And I may do just a little bit right here. What? Let's, not much left over. So let's apply a little bit more. I love to just play. Just playing along. All right. That's what we got so far. Really, really fun background. Next, what we want to do is um, we want to create that beautiful, beautiful little balloon, right? And another one of my favorite stamps, I'm just putting this away so I don't lose all those beautiful little pieces, is this guy right here. Another oldie but goodie. I love oldies but goodies. This one is 557126. And so we're going to use this guy and this guy right here. So we're going to use the balloon and this guy. So we're going to pull those off to the side for a moment. 
and we're going to uh, use the leftover white cardstock that we had earlier. But what I love to do is I like to actually go ahead and um, apply a little bit of water with my fingers to the paper and get it a little bit wet. You can use a, a spray bottle if you wish. And uh, I kind of want a little bit of a watercolor effect. So that's why I'm doing this. And I'm going to go ahead and apply uh, rock moss just like so. And it runs a little bit and I really love that. And I'm going to apply actually a little bit more water with my finger. And then I'm going to add a little bit of yellow on the top, which is the Colt's foot petals. And then let's do a little bit of, should we do a little bit of pink just for fun? Just make it a little bit different because it creates that fun orange. Ooh, love that. Look at that. Okay. Really, really beautiful effect. I want that green to be a little bit darker, so I'm just applying it a little bit heavier. And I know it makes it a little bit brownish, but I'm actually okay with that. I'm okay with that. The colors are really blending because of the, um, the water that I applied, which is pretty awesome. All right. And then I'm just going to take my finger and rub it in just a little bit. And those colors just really blend beautifully. Oh, love that. Look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and heat set this really quick. Do we have any questions so far? Okay. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and take my balloon and stamp my balloon onto my paper. Now that it's nice and dry. Like I said, you could use the black one. I just don't have it. <laughs> That's why I'm not using it. And just go ahead and stamp that really well. Are right, you guys talking about how to store your stamps? Yeah, I have them in baskets close to me so that um, I can actually um, use them. Otherwise, I forget about them. Well, that was not a very good image, was it? That was not a very great image. Let's do that one more time. I'm sorry, but we're going to do that one more time and I'm going to grab my stamping block. As much as I don't like stamping blocks, I'm going to conform and pull one out. And I know how much you guys love to watch me create this little technique, so we're going to do it again. Because I need a little bit more perfection than that. So once again, I'm just going to color it up. And we're going to start with the yellow on the top. Try to do this fairly quickly. So it's painless. Okay. Just like so. And then, last but not least, this guy. I love how they blend. It's just so beautiful. So, so beautiful. And here I go. And what's really cool is you could actually, actually take um, a baby wipe and blend them if you wanted to. That works really, really great. It pulls out a little bit of the color, but it does give it a really beautiful shading. Look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. I love, love, love that. So let's try this really quick. <laughs> I know. Don't tease me about the stamping blocks. For those of you that watch my shows often, I have this thing about stamping blocks. I don't know why I don't like them. So I know you guys are laughing at me right now, but that's okay. I'll let you laugh at me. All right. So we're going to go ahead and stamp this baby. Get it really nice and inked up. I probably should have a more flat uh, surface too. There's some junk underneath my table, which I'm sure doesn't help. So anyway, here I go with a stamping block. 
see if it works any better. <laughs> yep, that's much better. All right, nice little image, crisp image. Look at that. Amazing what a stamping block can do. I'm going to go ahead and wipe off some of that because it is India ink. It's very, um, it's very inky. And I like to use some other colors on this stamp another time. So I just want to wipe that off just like so. All right, that's how I clean my stamps is with a little bit of a baby wipe. I'm going to go ahead and heat set the ink so that it doesn't run because I know that once it's dry, it's completely set. And I'm going to go ahead and take my fussy cutting scissors and cut that up. But before I do that, let's go ahead and stamp our sore. Okay. Not like our sore sore, but our sore. <laughs> I don't even know if you guys got that joke, but that's okay. I got it. As long as I'm laughing, that's all that matters. Okay. Ah! See, that's what happens with a stamping block. It wouldn't have happened if I if I didn't have one. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. Perfect. 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 We're gonna cut that out as well in a little in a minute. So I'm just gonna cut that up. Let that dry while we fussy cut this little puppy out. But what's so great um, about these um, cards is, like I said, for those of you that missed it at the beginning of the show, is that if you're giving this away to someone that is not a crafter and you don't want to use all your incredible, you know, resins and flowers, <laughs> this is a, a really great alternative to a Prima card that, you know, has a whole lot of inky goodness, right? So really, really great. And that was really easy to cut, right? I'm going to put the camera up just a bit because I notice I'm a little bit out of frame. And so this guy's actually going to get raised. So I like to use foam dots. I like to use these guys right here. Black or white, it doesn't matter. I don't matter, black or white. So I have white ones right here of the really small ones, and I like that for some of the smaller things that we'll use in a moment. Like that little dot right there. We want to use that. Alright. So let's put that right on there. He's gonna go right there. Oh, I love I love how different this card is from the other one. So cute. See that? Pretty. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut the sore. And I'll show you how I do that. I don't totally take it apart. Okay. I leave some of those. Um, you'll see as I cut. Because it's white, you can't. Um, once I cut it, you won't be able to see a lot of the stuff that holds it together, a lot of the paper, so I'll just go ahead and cut. You don't have to be perfect. This is a mixed media card. I'm a fussy cutter. I do love to fussy cut. I know not everybody does. Um, and, you know, I think one of the biggest tricks is getting some good scissors. I have a pretty bad carpal, carpal tunnel, and these scissors with the spring really help me. Um, and I know that... Um, when you try to fussy cut with scissors that are really not intended for fussy cutting, it can become very frustrating um, and, uh, and you just don't feel like doing it anymore. So that's, uh, that's a big, you know, that's a big trick is using scissors that are meant for that. And that's just with anything, right? You want to have the right tools sometimes to, to do the job. Otherwise things become very frustrating when you try to do them with things that don't really work. So there's my little sore. All right, and I'll put that there, and I'm going to use my little foam dots to raise it up just a little bit. Fussy cutting is soothing. Yeah, it can be for sure. Oh, my fingers are stuck on there. Just about ripped that thing. I'm not in my game today, am I? All right, and then this sore is just going to go right there. All right, can you see that? really cute and then we're going to go ahead and take our card that we had done earlier the piece that we had done earlier and what i like to do 
because I'm going to go ahead and take um, some lace, and this is Prima lace, and we're going to attach it right there. So I'm going to take some glue. Okay. Oh, let's see this guy. This is just, I, I ran out of my beacon. Can you believe I still haven't gone to get more beacon? I know you guys are probably totally shocked. There we go. This one's coming out. But that's usually what I like to use, to be honest with you. I'm just going to go ahead and apply a little bit of glue. Just like so. And what I do is I actually apply this first and then my ribbon because then I know exactly where it's going to go. I know it's weird. I like to tuck it later. I'm weird that way. I'm going to go ahead and just measure it. And then, and then now I have kind of a, an idea of where it's going to go. Just apply it down like so. Okay. There we go. Just like that. And you just want to have a little bit of those pieces poking out. And the reason I like to use wet adhesive for this is because then I can kind of play around and move my pieces around until I'm happy with it. And then I, um, then it's done, right? Whereas if you use a dry adhesive, it's kind of hard to move your thing around a bit. So just like so, but we're not quite done. Just one last piece to finish off. And what I like to do at the end is I like to give those edges a little bit of a dark, dark something, something. So I take, you can either take, um, a gelato gelatos work really great. Um, and that just gives it a bit of a shadowy effect and you can just blend with your fingers a bit dry blending, no water blending. Otherwise it becomes too dark. Just like so. All right, just like that. Right, so now it, it looks a little bit better. And um, you could just go a step further. I didn't do it in the last card, but to really uh, make it all kind of come together, you could do the edges of this card, this part right here as well. Okay. There we go. I think actually that looks. A heck of a lot better. So here's the two cards together. Really, really cute, right? And why don't we go ahead and do the next one? All okay. right. So the next one looks like this. Another really cute card. And um, it doesn't really matter what size you use. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some cardstock again. So I like to use the white cardstock by Prima. And let's make any size. It doesn't matter. Sometimes I just like to cut my cardstock right in half. Sorry, I'm a bit off frame. Look, my fingers are dirty. <laughs> I like to cut right in half. And then I just take my cutter and I just cut it up. And I have my card. Maybe we'll cut a little bit off of the uh, bottom. Just a bit. There, we have a cute little square card. That's my measurements, all right? That's how easy it is to make a card in my household. That's how easy. And what we're going to start off by doing is we want to create kind of a fun resist background. So we're going to start by um, using some embossing powder. And we want to use some clear embossing powder. This is uh, Angel Wings Ruby. So it's like clear with um, kind of a ruby um, uh, shimmer to it. So it's kind of funky. And um, we're going to go ahead and use a stamping block. I know it's crazy. I need a bigger one though. And can you believe Lemore's using a stamping blocks block twice in one show? It's like, what's the world coming to? I tell you. And what we're going to use is one of my favorites, 961015. Okay, this beautiful dirty stamp. And we're going to come on get it off come off baby don't you love it when they get stuck so much on here I don't know why that happens that's crazy come on baby come off you know you want to there we go it's off and it's off and uh, 
not get this too dirty. And what we want to do is I like to use the embossing dauber by Ranger. I find it easier um, and it's always moist. So I kind of like that. But before I do that, I'm actually going to clean my stamp off because I notice it's a bit dirty and I don't want it to be dirty for um, this particular technique. That's what happens when you don't clean your stamps, people. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because I don't want it to be dirty. That's as good as it's going to get, I think. Whoops. Oh, the lid popped off. Is it coming? There we go. All right. A little bit juicy. Hoping the ink is on there. It is. It's really nice. And then we're going to go ahead and stamp it like so. Just a little bit off the page. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not going for perfection here. It's okay. It's fine. It's a little bit dirty. But that's all right. We'll make do, right? And the other side, just like so. You can actually see it now. <laughs> and we're going to need a piece of papier. So we're going to use black. I'm going to show you how fun this shimmer is. Okay, just like so. Didn't quite get all the little pieces. And then I can go back and put it right in the bottle. Just like that. We have a full bottle again. And then we're going to take our card and we're going to go ahead and give it a quick heat set. I can't believe how dirty that stamp was. Holy moly. And then here we go. So beautiful. Once we have that ink on there, it's not even going to matter anyway. Now what I want to show you is how funky, can, can you guys see the shimmer in this? Let me see if that, can you guys see that? Isn't that fun? Well, there we go. So fun. Very, very shimmery. If it wasn't so dirty, it's like a gray stamp. It's like we stamped with gray. So now actually what I'd like to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and take my, um, I'm going to open the card up and I'm actually going to see if I can cover this up a bit. Um, so I'm just going to take a piece of paper. Okay, and I'm just going to cover that up so it doesn't get totally um, wet. And I'm going to wet this guy a bit. Okay, just like so. And then I'm going to take my stamping block, just like so. And I'm going to take my chalk edgers in all the colors that I want. So this guy. And I'm going to apply them right onto my stamping block. Okay, just like so. I'm going to continue to do that. I'm going to start by three, three at a time. And I'm going to take a water brush, just like this one, and take a little bit of water and start painting my card and kind of creating a really fun watercolor effect. Okay. Just like so. You could use watercolor paper too, um, but the cardstock works just fine. Just like that on the top. You can even apply it just like so and just move it around a bit. But I like using the um, stamping block. It works really, really great. Isn't that beautiful? And then you can go ahead and grab another color, the pink. You can add a little bit of pink on there. 
Make sure you clean your brush or it turns into a little bit of a muddy mess. Muddy, muddy mess. Okay, just like that. And let those colors just kind of blend and bleed into each other. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of the yellow. Right in the middle. Beautiful. And I'm actually going to go ahead and take a baby wipe and wipe some of that off so it doesn't go into there. And we're going to go ahead and give this a quick heat set because we're going to do this in layers. see so far the um, the funky little effect it does so we're gonna kind of continue and make it a little bit darker so now we're gonna go in with the yellow and not add any water onto the paper but just to our brush and make it a little bit darker and this is kind of where it starts to come alive okay and that green kind of the yellow and the blue just kind of mixed together to create that gorgeous green Really, really beautiful. And then we want a little bit of that teal. But one of the colors I really want is a little bit of a red, if I have one, I do. I've got Ladybug right here, which I love. So we're gonna use a little bit of red. Just up here, oh beautiful. Actually, I'd like to apply it right like so. I want really bright red. Yeah, just a little bit of red right here too and continue to add water and what's really fun is that you can really create watercolor effects with them even though they're permanent because once they're permanent they're permanent but you can play with them until they're permanent which is you know a huge thing it's pretty awesome so I need a little bit of yellow right there there we go just like that and blend in to create a little bit of an orange and then we want a little bit of pink. Okay, just like so. The card is kind of coming together, right? And then one of the things that I want to do is I want to add just a little bit more blue. Right on the edges, right there. I'm okay if I get that way. I can always go ahead and cut it off and then remount it. Okay, just like that. So you can play with those colors until you're kind of satisfied. I want maybe just a bit more red, just a little bit brighter. I just, I like brightness. I like brightness in my life. And because the paper is wet, um, it really allows me to move these chalk edges around quite a bit. And I can always take my baby wipe. And then I'm going to actually start pulling some of that off. And what you'll see is that beautiful resist coming through, right? It's a really, really fun to play with. So I'm going to go ahead and heat this up get it nice and dry do you have any questions so far Are you guys calling me Monet? You guys are hilarious. So I want some of these parts to be just a little bit darker, so I'm going to go ahead and take my 
chalk edger now and just make it slightly darker because I can. Okay, just in certain areas. There's, do you notice how versatile these chalk edgers are? I mean, they're just so stunning. Adding a little bit of teal in there. Circular motion. And I'm also always going to go ahead with my baby wipe and wipe some of that um, excess off. You just you can just like continue playing. And that's the beauty of this stuff, right? Add a little bit more red to make it a bit brighter once it's dry. And then wipe that excess off. Right? See how it's like it's coming together, isn't it? A little bit of yellow. Okay. And then take the excess and wipe it off. It's all about layers, my friends. It's all about layers. These chalk edges certainly rock. There we go. And what else do we need? A little bit of green. Let's get a little bit of green in there. Let's get a little bit of the maybe rock moss in there. Just like that. All right. So it's pretty bright and beautiful. I think that's that's pretty good. I could keep going because you know you guys know me. I just never stop once I start. So. Um, you know, you can get totally different effects as you can see, two different um, cards. So let's go ahead and create the remaining of the back, remainder of the background. And what we're going to use is through that same stamp that we used earlier in sort of that same way. So this guy right here, and we're going to take our Stamper's Big Brush pen, but this time we're not going to stamp off. We want it nice and dark, not using a stamping block. And we're going to go about right here, okay. just like so, and then about right there. Okay, just like so. And then what we want to do is use some of our, this is um, from the Anna Marie collection. This is 570095. And we're going to use this guy right here. Very untraditional way of using the stamp, and I love it. And of course, do not use a stamping block for this. You don't need it. And we're going to just stamp on the corners like so. And a little bit on the bottom. And just continue using it until it's kind of run out. You want sort of that, um, you know, edgy, not not so clean um, look, okay, just like so. Then what you want to do is you want to take <clears throat> this guy, sorry, my the throat hurts all of a sudden, <clears throat> and you want to take this guy and we're going to stamp it. Let's use a stamping block for this. That's three times in one show, three times, people. Can you count? I know, you probably can't even believe this, but oh, see, I should have cleaned this off first. All right, it's probably too big of a stamping block to use on this, but why is it moving? It's because it's still wet, isn't it? We might not be using a stamping block. Me and stamping blocks, we, we don't have a very good relationship. <laughs> I'm not sure why. We just never got in the long. All right, and I'm going to turn it around. Just like so. Ta-da. Beautiful. That's a pretty nice image for not using a stamping block, I must say. And now we're going to go the You Make Me Happy. And we're going to stamp that right there. We'll see how that turns out. Beautiful. 
just beautiful. And we're going to go ahead and outline that in just a moment. And what I like to use is I love to use this um, Signo uh, Ball, Uniball uh, pen. I love, love, love these. And they just kind of give all your projects a little bit of oomph. But I'm going to go ahead and give it a quick heat set to get that ink nice and dry. So let me close that up for a minute. Do we have any questions so far? Do you notice how uh, white now the um, stamp that we did earlier is? So it just, the, the fact that the stamp was dirty didn't really matter, I guess. So what I like to do, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. Sorry about that, there we go. Sorry if I just made you major dizzy. Let me turn the, there we go. And what I like to do is I just like to go in and um, outline a bit. And it just helps kind of pop the letters a little bit and uh, sometimes I just go in right in the middle with the I love this pen because it's very very white um, where some of the other ones just don't always work and it drives me crazy or they turn kind of a pinky shade um, so yeah I, I this is my favorite I must say right. just like that There we go. All right. Oh, sorry. Was it off focus? Do you see that? How it just kind of pops? There we go. And then I like to just do my fun little um, borders, which is literally by doing this. I don't know why I love that so much, but I always do that. It's just my thing. It's just my thing. And then I just go in and just kind of outline everything just makes everything pop it's a little bit crazy but it's fun and then I just I can outline this guy too a little bit gives it a little something something right just like that and you can even outline this guy too a bit if you wanted to get crazy could get crazy why not right it is a mixed media card after all so that's I mean that's pretty much it you could do the insights too that is the cards my friends I thought maybe we'd have time for one more but I think we're pretty close to time but the last thing I want to do is you do want to oh you would want to tie a little bit of a ribbon so I do you can take one of these twines and I love these these um, hemp twines I guess and you can just wrap it around Oops. just like so and then you can give it a beautiful little knot and you my friends are done there we go and Ta-da, right? Very, very, very cute. Oh, I didn't tie that very well. That was very loose. That does not look good. We gotta do a redo. It needs a redo. Something like that. All right, but that's it. I'm gonna switch the camera angles in just a moment and you guys can ask me some more questions. But that is the card, so you can see kind of the same technique and each card will turn out totally different right just like so love these um, chalk edgers certainly um, get yourself some because they're just way too much fun to play with so versatile let me go ahead and switch the camera angle for those of you that are watching the recording thank you so much for watching 
and please join us next Thursday at 6 p.m. Sta uh, Pacific Standard, sorry, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time with Steph Miller for a mini album using the Seashore Collection.